Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to Dr. Zaki Yamani bin Zakaria, our honorable host, and to all the viewers. Welcome to the UTM Engineering Student Virtual Hangout Zone, hosted by Faculty of Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. Today, I am so pleased to see all the audience eager to engage with our fascinating and very influential topic, engineering practice experience session. In spite of this entire COVID-19 pandemic, thanks for attending our live session. With your loved ones at home, I hope you're safe and sound. Prior to the event, let me first introduce myself. My name is Shamshil Tader, a fourth year student in chemical engineering. I am going to be your moderator for this program, so I hope you will be able to carry me through this live session. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you our honorable speaker today, Dr. Zaki Yamani bin Zakaria. Dr. Zaki acquired his first degree in chemical engineering from University of Bradford, England in 1999 and chemical engineering master's degree from University of Technology Malaysia in 2004. After that, he worked as a chemical engineer in an oil and gas related company and as a process engineer in an edible oil refinery. He joined the faculty as a lecturer in July 2008. He then continued to pursue his PhD in chemical engineering, also in UTM and graduated in 2013. Dr. Zaki Yamani is a professional engineer under the Board of Engineers Malaysia since 2011, a chartered engineer under the Engineering Council of UK since 2011, a professional technologist under Malaysian Board of Technology since 2018, a certified energy manager under ASEAN Energy Management System since 2016. He's a member of Chemical Reaction Engineering Group and member of Resource Sustainability Research Alliance of University of Technology Malaysia. Dr. Zaki Amani has a strong background in reaction engineering, more specifically in catalytic reaction engineering, which deals with catalyst development, characterization, testing of raw materials to higher value added compounds. Dr. Zaki Amani has successfully published 89 referred journals, papers in various reputable journals which resulted produced 269 citations and H index of eight since he joined UTM 10 years ago. He has received two best of the best awards in IFX 2015 and 2017, three gold medals in IFX 2015 to IFX 2017 and now in 2018, one silver medal in INETEX 2016 and one bronze medal in UG Grand Challenge Competition 2018. Teaching, particularly engineering education, has been Dr. Zaki Yamani's passion. He shares knowledge and experiences in his Chemical React Engineering World blog and Chemical Engineering World Facebook page, which has about 44,000 followers since 2016. Without further delay, let's welcome our honorable speaker, Dr. Zaki Yamani bin Zakaria. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to everybody. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sham Shazid, uh, for the very kind and elaborate uh, introduction about me. Uh, for your information, the audiences, okay, uh, Sham Shazid is currently my undergraduate research student and uh, I can say he is doing very well, he's diligent. Okay, so I, I, I want to see uh, the result uh, soon, okay, Sham? Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So at the moment, uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction again. So let me share the screen. Can uh, is it? Can you see? All right. Okay. Okay. So okay. Again, my name is uh, Zaki Amadi bin Zakaria. You can call me Doctor Zaki. So wherever you are, if you are a chemical engineering student or electrical engineering student or mechanical engineering student or what kind of any discipline of engineering, it's okay. Okay. Even though I am a chemical engineer, I am talking now about engineering practice uh, experience sharing. So it doesn't matter whatever engineering discipline you are. So please uh, spend some time with me and then I'll share what I know so that you will get the best of what I know. Okay, so this is going to be very useful for you and 
inshallah it will be uh, you can gain the benefit all right so i'll be sharing uh, a little bit about okay a little bit about engineering practice experience sharing okay so uh just now uh, sham has actually uh, briefed you about roughly my background okay but throughout this presentation i'll be explaining you a little bit more detail about that okay so before that let me just uh again introduce myself okay uh just now uh sham mentioned that i have uh, studied my undergraduate uh in bradford university but before that i studied in northern consortium united kingdom that is uh in pusat pendidikan persediaan itm shahalam that time it was called itm now it's called uitm and then before that i did my a level in shahalam that was in 94 to 95 or 96 okay uh previous job okay uh, my previous job is actually i uh, was actually a chemical slash project engineer that was with my the, the the first company i i was attached with and then uh after that i worked as a process engineer in a physical refinery plant in pasir gudang okay uh among the membership uh, that i have uh, i am the uh member for iem member in institute of Engin engineers malaysia uh member in ICAMI. Uh, Malaysia Oil Scientist Technologies Association, MOSTA, as well as the Engineering Council of UK, uh, CEM, which stands for Chartered Engineer. Uh, uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> and then SEM stands for Society of Engineer Engineering Educators Malaysia. And then UKAN, United Kingdom Alumni Network. And also I am also a unit, uh, UTM alumni. So uh, this picture is actually me when I was studying in uh, Bradford, UK. So this was in the countryside. So that time my hair was a little bit longer. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to share today, okay. First, I'm going to talk about working experience for engineers. Okay, this will be briefly shared, okay. And then engineers, job scope and responsibilities. How can undergraduate students prepare themselves to tackle the engineering world in university? Okay, so you, this you need to prepare and this you need to mentally and physically, spiritually prepare. Okay, and then after that, hopefully we will have time for some interactive question and answers. Okay, and hopefully this all be, can be done in one hour, hopefully. But I hope the host don't mind if we extend it a little bit. And now it's uh, 3 plus, okay, 8 plus uh, 3. Okay, as you know, okay, uh, there are a lot of engineering disciplines, okay. I have listed here 16 engineering disciplines ranging from mechatronic, mechanical engineering, software engineering, electrical engineering, chemical engineering, biochemical engineering, and then we move on downwards, industrial engineering. Okay, I need to mention everything, every, every engineering discipline so that uh, everybody will not be mad at me. Okay, structural engineering, civil engineering, industrial engineering, electronics engineering, biomedical engineering, okay, uh, public health, okay uh aeronautical engineering sound engineering marine engineering petroleum engineering and there are still a few more of engineering disciplines that are available as well okay but regardless of whatever engineering discipline you are i would like to congratulate you because you are actually going to be an engineer or maybe if you are already an engineer well done okay you have uh, actually completed your bachelor degree and maybe i assume you are now serving as a practicing engineer or maybe you are going to serve as a practicing engineer soon okay congratulations okay for those of you still studying don't worry there are bright future for you out there okay uh let me just uh, continue okay so i'll be sharing uh, a very simple case study of engineering experience sharing based on the oil and gas okay some may feel that uh, if you are an electrical engineer, or maybe if you are a civil engineer, or if you are, if you are uh, uh, a, a, a other kinds of engineering, maybe it's difficult for you to go to this oil and gas industry for you to work. But please don't be mistaken, there are huge opportunities for you. So I'm just showing this oil and gas as an example, okay? So uh, a lot of people will actually uh, feel that those related to petroleum engineering or geology engineering can work in the oil and gas sector but hey i am a chemical engineer i have experience working in the oil and gas industry so that's something that i am very very grateful okay so i uh, i want to share okay this is actually oh sorry this was actually my second job okay so i stated there my second job with a company called complete oil field stimulation services sendiran berhad which 
was actually a, 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 a oil and gas servicing company, okay, which is helping to service Petronas and other oil and gas uh, producing company. Okay, this is my second job. Okay, I'm actually uh, narrowing down and focusing down on my second job. My first job was actually a uh, research assistant, research officer in a universe in UTM. Okay, that was in uh, 1999 to 2001. But after I completed my master's degree, so I joined COSS, COS Nya uh, which is an oil and gas servicing company. And I joined initially as a chemical technologist, okay, where I handle uh, chemical stuff in the company, all right? Uh, but soon after that, uh, I, 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 I became or I acted as the project slash chemical engineer. After my friend who was actually a project engineer, uh, he resigned. So I uh, took his role as well. Okay, so this is actually uh, my one, one of the project, one of our main project, which, which is actually the which is actually called the internal pipeline chemical cleaning ipcc so there are a lot there are numerous pipeline from uh upstream to downstream upstream is where where the uh, offshore platform uh, were located are located and then downstream are where the refineries are located so there are a lot of pipeline and what you are seeing at the screen now is actually uh the uh, uh, what we call a 48 inch uh, gas pipeline okay 48 inch gas pipeline and what you can see are the blue down there can can you see my uh you can see my mouse there okay this this blue mouse is a blue mouse this blue is actually what we call pig peak okay it's peak in, if you are uh from petroleum engineering you will know this peak or when we apply peak inside the pipeline it is actually pigging activity but pigging activity is actually uh, to clean the internal side of the pipeline. Okay, so this is actually what we, uh, that time I was doing this, and uh, we were actually inserting this uh, two ton. Okay, this is very heavy. Okay, two thousand kilogram. We inserted this inside this pipeline. All right, and what you can see the the yellow guy here uh, wearing yellow coverall is actually uh, the Petronas people, and the white guy are on my side, the contractor. Okay, so let let's just see uh, the others. Okay, and then uh, when I was with Cost and Yarmul Hat, okay, uh, those listed here were some of my other job function. Okay, we handle chemical matter. Okay, I, I basically handle chemical matter because that time I was the uh, chemical technologist. So I did a lot of uh, testing, uh, testing of chemicals, testing of quality. Okay, I prepared chemical preparation. I prepared chemicals to be injected inside the pipeline. Uh, and also chemical blending. Okay, we need to inject chemical, which in this case the chemical is called degreaser, which which we want to clean. It's degreaser. You can you can you can call degreaser something like a soap. So it's like uh, uh you are rinse you are washing inside the pipeline, but uh, but then you you have this uh, soapy effect. Okay, so it will the pipe the 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 pig can can go inside there. So we put the degreaser and then we launch the pig and then it will try to clean. To try to scrap the internal dust, sludge, mud, whatever inside the pipeline. Okay, and then uh, we also injected another chemical called corrosion inhibitor, which is actually a layer that we put inside the pipeline so that uh, it will protect the pipeline so that it will reduce the corrosion rate. Okay. The reason why we are doing this is because we want to protect this pipeline from corroding because the, the petroleum and also the natural gas coming from uh, South China Sea, okay, where the plat our uh, petrol platform were located, contain a lot of uh, uh, heavy metals and also other corrosive material. So those corrosive material can be inside the pipeline, uh, uh, go through the pipeline, and then some of it will actually contribute to corroding the pipeline from the internal, okay? So that is why we need to encapsulate the internal pipeline with a corrosion inhibitor, okay? So instead of maybe the pipeline uh, by calculation, if we use National Association of Cor Corrosion Engineers, NACE, there are a lot of standard uh, documentation there. So if we use the calculation, 
maybe okay i'm just saying okay this is this may be okay example okay uh maybe the pipeline pipeline can burst okay due to corrosion uh on the uh after 18 years of servicing but then that's why we were hired because we help to protect and then maybe instead of 18 years by calculation and also by some indication okay uh maybe we can prolong the lifespan of this pipeline to maybe 25 or 26 years example okay so okay that enough about the pipeline so uh, on top of that okay i i do uh production of uh specialty chemical that uh, this specialty chemical is not that this normal chemical like uh, uh hydrochloric acid uh, sodium hydroxide that normally you get you can get uh, from the your lab okay or from your secondary school and so on but these are more specialized chemical uh, the, the 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 ingredient for the corrosion inhibitor the ingredient for other very very special chemical which is uh, required for the oil and gas okay it contains something like quaternary ammonium chloride uh, quaternary ammonium bromide with plus some other mixing of other chemicals so it's a very highly complicated chemical okay and then we have uh, conducted bioremediation which is to actually to clean to to remediate to bioremediate the location because you see once we uh, open the the barrel door of the pipeline so some of the some of the oil okay condensed oil can uh, will, will actually uh, be released to the ground and then this oil actually contains a lot of uh, toxic and also heavy metal which is very dangerous and that's why we need to to bioremediate so if you see this guy so this is one of us uh, he is actually uh, spraying the bioremediation chemical to actually encapsulate and neutralize the heavy metal and toxic uh, material okay and then uh, you see uh, this this picture is me so i'm sometimes i i do this okay so sometimes i do myself i spray this is like uh if you see people want to uh, poison the some some grass uh, on the side road or this is we are using that thing but then in 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 in, in the tank be, uh, behind me that's actually uh the bio remediation chemical okay so i'm not going to reveal the brand <laughs> okay and then uh, this is my friend who is actually checking the pressure gauge uh for the pipeline before we engage with any pigging activities okay so uh back in office okay this is our office uh, back then okay this was in somewhere in near near skudai area okay and uh we have an office uh and this is where i was actually preparing a report uh it's, it's normal we need to prepare okay engineer need to prepare a lot of reports okay uh progress report uh site visit report job completion report and many 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 types of reports okay so and this is this was uh when before we go to kertes terengganu okay just now the picture before this oops before this this all happened in uh paka paka terengganu okay paka terengganu okay this is a uh, gas petronas uh, processing plant okay so we are we uh, sorry we were actually uh preparing for the uh preparing chemical to be transferred and loaded to the uh refinery all right okay wait let, uh so this is blending chemical so we actually blend the chemical and if you can see i'm wearing some kind of coverall and my friend here is also wearing a coverall the coverall is actually uh dark green in color and it's called nomex coverall do you know what is nomex coverall unfortunately we cannot i cannot see your response so let me see if i can see in facebook or maybe no okay uh, but then no max coverall is actually a special coverall which actually can prevent us prevent prevent fire from touching us so actually this is actually like a fire prevention costume for us okay so uh, i i'm not saying that if we wear this we are not going to be caught on fire but that actually it can prevent it can delay the fire from attacking our body uh, for several minutes so this is very important for us to wear so this is part of the safety okay okay uh, this was at the site somewhere in 2000 2004 something like that okay uh it was very very hot in Paka Terengganu uh if you are, you are from Terengganu or maybe area Kuantan Pahang area you know the heat how how hot it, it, it is at, uh, at that site okay so it's very hot and I was there together with my friend okay 
I am actually wearing a white coverall, which is called Tyvek coverall. So if just now I mentioned about Nomex coverall, okay, Nomex coverall will actually help to protect you from fire, but Tyvek coverall will help to protect you from uh, chemical spillage and heavy metal, toxic material and so on. So those are very, very critical uh, costume or coverall that we need to wear when we are working here at this current place uh, inside the slide that you are looking at at the moment. So why we need to wear that? Because, okay, because uh, to prevent in case fire uh, is there, so we are protected from fire. And then if in case chemical spillage or maybe we were uh, in touch with condensate, which is, have, which is very toxic, okay, uh, very hazardous. So we, we are going to be protected by Tyvek. So those are very, very important safety features. And I am actually wearing double. So uh, white outside layer and then green inside layer. Okay. And it's very, very hot. And wow, it's really hot. So here are some bottle tests at the plant site that I conducted. We need to see the compatibility of chemical. Okay. So this is the basic chemical side. So that we want to know that there will be no layers uh, be produced. Okay, and then after a very, very hot, tiring work under the sun, okay, during, uh, okay, after after work, after we completed our work, we, <laughs> we went for a short swim, some fun uh, after work. Okay, this is still at Pakar Tengganu, okay, uh, but this place is actually not gazetted for, uh, for, for, for this kind of purpose, but then that time, yeah, we, we just went there uh, just to relieve some, some stress. Okay, then uh, once in a while, okay, I also have or conducted some project at offshore, okay, offshore platform. So working at offshore platform is very interesting and I'm saying this, okay, this is not specially for petroleum engineers or chemical engineers only, okay. If you are electrical engineers, if you are other kinds of engineers, there are chances that you can also work here, all right. Okay, let me just continue. Okay, uh, I really appreciate and I, I, I really cherish the moment that I was able to work uh, offshore, okay, at offshore platform, and it's very great. Okay, uh, I travel there using this uh, super, okay, I, uh, from my experience, I travel using three types of helicopter. One is Super Puma, Super, super Puma helicopter, and then Sikorsky 66 and Sikorsky 76, okay. Uh, the biggest one is, of course, Sikorsky 66. Uh, I don't know what, what, uh, what the 66 and 76 indicate, but uh, the one that you are looking here now is actually uh, Super Puma. Okay, I traveled from Kerta Airport. Okay, uh, we traveled from Kerta Airport uh, and the airport only have helicopters traveling to various platforms at South China Sea. So there are hundreds and hundreds of platforms. Okay, but before you can go to offshore platforms, okay, you need to go for this HUET. And what is this? HUET is actually uh, helicopter underwater escape training. Okay, you need to attend this HUET training so that you can uh, be granted an offshore passport when you pass your training. Okay, when you have this offshore passport, then only you can go to offshore platform. All right, so I need to speed up. <laughs> okay, this is actually the view, the scenario, uh, one of the events that I managed to capture a photo. If you can see here, there's, this is an offshore platform. This is called Dulang B. Uh, okay, Dulang B platform, Dulang B. This is a mother platform. It's still around. And this is actually what I call F F FPSO, which is floating production, shipping, offloading. Okay, Dulang B is the mother platform and there are also Dulang A, Dulang C and Dulang D which are the satellite platform. So mother platform is actually the platform where many people can, can, can live inside there. There, there are living quarters there. Okay, uh, you can uh, live there, you can work there. Okay, and then the satellite platforms are the platform uh, that we call unmanned platform. The platform is there, okay, but then we just go there for doing some work. Okay, with nobody live in, in that platform is quite small, all right? So, but once in a while, we need to go to the satellite platform to view or to check, to take sample or to monitor, to do inspection, to do maintenance and so on, okay? 
Okay, my assignment at that time, oh, by the way, before that, you can see the platform here, right? And then you can see this FPSO. Can you see this helicopter? Ah, this, these are the most popular way of traveling and touch, touching down to the platform. So this, this helicopter, do, 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 and then can we land there. And then one other way of uh, reaching the platform is by using a boat, a, a, a small boat. You can see, maybe it's very difficult for you to see, but it's there. Okay. Okay. Back then, my assignment was actually to do the demulsifier and deoiler bottle test. So because uh, we were actually participating in the tender uh, to supply with specialty chemicals to Petronas Sharigali that time. Okay. And then, uh, so it was very interesting to do, to participate in that uh, exercise. Okay. I visited and traveled to various offshore platforms to conduct uh, demulsifier and deoiler tests on those platforms because all reservoirs are different okay so we need to uh, have special custom-made solution for each reservoir okay life at sea i'm saying i'm telling you okay it's fun it's relaxing the meal the food five star okay five star it's like just like a hotel okay and then it's free the food is free okay you can have a lot of things to eat there and that time when I was working there, I'm, I'm, I, I getting, I, I put on uh, a lot of weight. Okay, <laughs> great entertain, great entertainment. So on the offshore platform, you will have a many entertainment. Uh, not to say a lot, but there are some, some entertainments. Okay, it's interesting. So uh, basically, I, I love and I really appreciate. I am very thankful to my company, which actually allowed me to work here. I mean, to, 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 uh, to visit all these uh, offshore platforms. Okay, this is actually the unmanned platform, Dulang B platform. Eh? Dulang B. Sorry, this is the bandar platform. Okay, uh, uh, on the platform, there are cabins. Okay, these are the cabins. You can see here, this is a cabin. And then uh, refinery flare. This, this side is the refinery flare. The crane, this is the crane. Okay, helicopter pad. The helicopter pad is up here. It's very difficult to see. Okay, but it's very, very high. Okay, that's why if you attend helicopter underwater escape training, all right, you will actually be trained to jump from a very high location, just actually to simu simulate if anything happened to this offshore platform, you can and you have been trained to jump from up there into the sea, okay? If you have watched Deep Water Horizon, you can imagine that, okay? You need to jump, okay? That, that time, uh, the hero, I forgot his name, <laughs> he jumped with that lady, okay, from the helicopter pad down to the sea. And it's very, very, very extremely high. So you need to see. Okay, and then you see, this is a fishing boat. Okay, this is actually a fishing boat. This is not part of us. Okay, this fishing boat is somehow always, uh, they love to stay around the offshore platform. Okay, if you are in front of me, I can, I will definitely ask you why why they, they stay nearby the offshore platform. But then it's very difficult for me to ask you. So uh, let me just say that uh, they were there because they want to use the, 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 the light, okay, the, 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 um, the flare coming from here, which is very, very bright, okay? So they will have, they, this, this fishing boat will have some source of light, okay? So because at night, this South China Sea is total darkness, except when you see uh, this platform flaring, okay, flaring fire, and it's very huge, it's very hot, it's very, very powerful, so it brights up the whole place, okay, certain diameter, you can see, all right. Okay, this is satellite platform, okay, Dulang Sea, unmanned platform, this is very small, okay, uh, I was, uh, I, I, I snapped this photo from the small ship, that transported us from Dulang B to Dulang C. Okay, if you can see, there's a there's a rope there. Okay, there's a rope, some rope. And how can I be transferred to the platform? Is by using the rope, swing from the from the small uh, ship to the platform. We we swing like Tarzan, but then the the the, the ship uh, will get closer to the platform. All right, but then it cannot touch the platform because. Uh, it can actually uh, affect or vibrate the platform, and then we don't we don't want that to happen. So 
we need, just need to be as close as possible so maybe if we touch maybe a little bit but then we need to use the rope okay so one way is by using the the boat okay and then the rope to transfer ourselves there and then what another way is by using the crane the crane here also can transfer us and then another way is by using okay if you can see there's no uh uh helicopter pad up here so we usually use the boat but some of the uh, setup platform have all right so this is me i was injecting a certain amount of chemical some resin to actually formulate the oiler and also the the emulsifier okay for to be injected in the reservoir at this particular dulang b dulang a dulang c dulang d so there are there, there are some other platforms that i i visit okay but then this is just uh showing this this part okay uh those are okay the visit okay if you can see behind here these are actually the satellite platform that just now i visited which is dulang dulang c if i'm not mistaken and this is dulang c uh okay so uh and then when when anybody's asked me okay what is the most beautiful moment okay what's the best moment the beautiful moment the most magnificent moment of your work and my answer will always consistently be this is the moment okay the, the beautiful sunset on south china sea and nobody there okay except one or two of my friends and then you can you, you stay there on the boat rustic enjoying the moment seizing the moment it's simply beautiful it's very pure it's pure beautiful okay uh so that's the best moment uh it it reminds me that god is huge okay and you are just a small entity on the planet okay uh so we appreciate the beauty we appreciate uh you see the environment and so on so this is a simply fantastic moment okay uh but then you see uh whenever okay just just now uh i i, I mentioned that we use like thousands so this this is like fear factor style okay uh and then using the 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 crane to actually the crane to actually transfer us each so that's another but then i don't have the photo for that but may, maybe if you google it maybe you can find some photos of people being crane crane from the boat to the top of the platform but for every activity you need to have a work permit okay so you need to re request for a work permit from the uh, plant superintendent to do the job and then it's either a green work permit or a red work permit uh, green work permit is uh, not really dangerous but then the red working red work permit will 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 be associated with maybe hot work or electrical work uh, which is which tend to uh, maybe uh, can trigger some fire or explosion all right so red uh, work permit is uh, more serious compared to the green one okay so uh, working here the safety feature is very very super strict okay so uh, I, I i remember i recall when i first touched down into one of the platform and then i walk through the stairs inside the quarters living quarters i saw this poster uh, father dad please come back safe and alive so when i saw that poster it felt oh it, i feel very sensitive okay it, it's it's very touching because uh we we see that uh we, we immediately remember our loved ones okay our our kids our family our wife and so on so we we need to stay safe and really really super safe okay so beautiful sunset and okay so ha <laughs> this is actually a book okay that i wrote and i published in october 2018 uh, and i just showed this book because i actually took the photo from here uh, my experience uh, that time okay i took this photo and i created this as the cover book for my my book which is called ramblings of a chemical engineer okay so this is where i compile my experiences and then uh for other young engineers to read okay and uh, it's uh, being sold in amazon.com uh, $15.99 but you can if you can contact me i can give it to you a cheaper price not like this price because this one if you convert to ringgit it's going to be super expensive so i'm just selling it uh, in very very far lower than this okay i mean in ringgit okay so this is still at the living quarters okay uh, yeah, offshore platform so those are some uh, chemicals that i uh, tested uh, this 
if you see this de oil test okay this means that uh the black color is actually the oil and the white color bottom there is actually water so this reservoir is okay okay i'm saying this is okay which means there are still a lot of oil inside that reservoir but this one the reservoir is not okay no oil and then we just have some traces of oil on the surface but it's very difficult for you to see so this reservoir is running out of oil so it, because it has been actually drilled for several years so the oil has been reduced and reduced okay so those are, are my portable workstation i just br bring my bottles and some tool kits that's all for the owner and this is the cabin so i i stayed in this cabin okay with my friend okay this is uh, the example of cabin so i i sleep here on under and then my friend up there and then we have a curtain so that to differentiate the, uh, between day and night <laughs> okay so what about are uh, the engineering opportunity opportunities for oil and gas Okay, we have been talking about petroleum and chemical engineers, but then mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, software, electronic, marine control instrument engineer can also work in the oil and gas industry. Really, seriously. Okay. And then uh, on top of that, maintenance engineer, which is normally a mechanical engineer. Okay, maintenance engineer. Okay, normally a mechanical engineer. Hydraulic mechanic, rig floor mechanic. So those are also related to mechanical engineer. Charge man, which is related to uh, electrical electrician driller okay this uh under after charge man downwards those are not uh, uh engineering uh disciplines not to say engineering but those are not people who graduated as engineer but they 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 uh, is sufficient for them to undergo certain uh certificate or training that's all okay but then you can see uh, the opportunities opportunities for those non-engineering person charge man electrician driller drill operator welder underwater welder which is very very rich subsea engineer subsea supervisor so there are enormous opportunities for many people for many kinds of engineering discipline all right plenty uh control engineer why all those things need require control equipment they need scada they need uh uh, many things to control uh the the the, the plants the small plants the small refinery on top of the platform and so on okay and then they are also safety officers okay if anybody can be a safety officer regardless of the discipline you just need to go for the training okay uh, in malaysia you need to be a safety officer and then maybe there are some extra extra special training that uh, that you should take in order for you to get to the uh to to work uh, in oil and gas okay medic catering personnel catering you just cook okay radio control operator ship pilot okay the ship okay you see you, you just know you saw some uh boat some small ship okay it need to be piloted helicopter pilot crane operator cleaner you think ah uh, you still need some people to do the washing the cleaning the sweeping the mopping so they need they, we, we still need cleaner there inside uh, uh, at the offshore platform cementing supervisor so this is related to civil engineering okay okay civil engineering but then i i miss civil engineering engineers here okay project management risk management specialist asset integrity specialist and so on so those are some of the companies that uh, are related to organizations that are, that are related to uh, this uh, uh, oil and gas okay and sometimes there are some rough moments at the sea so you need to keep your prayers okay uh pray to god that you are always safe sometimes it, it is not because of the uh, carelessness of the unsafe behavior but it is sometimes coming from god from it is the nature okay the na when nature uh is like that as what you can see it's going to be very rough and you are going to be very very you need to you need to uh, uh, get the protection from God. Okay, back at the office. So I after I get back from preparing those uh, chemicals, specialty chemicals. Okay, then I formulated the chemicals and then I prepare uh, the sample to be submitted for the analysis. This is for the tender. Okay, and this is to show some scenario where pipelines. Okay. This is also uh, petroleum pipelines, but then it is located at very, very super extreme cold weather. So not only in our situation, which is uh, hot and humid, 
throughout the year but then some other places like this and even some other places such as in uh, when i visited uh, kalimantan okay uh, i visited pertamina talisman platform uh, uh, company so there's there's no offshore platform there but then there's uh, it's actually an uh, onshore drilling place okay but then we can see the pipeline laying from here to there and then we can see people uh, dwellers people living nearby they they wash their clothes and then the way they in malaysia we just dry it on the uh, we, we hang our clothes uh, at the, at the designated place okay but then in in this place in indonesia when i visited they put their t-shirt their saro their uh, trousers on on the pipeline and then after maybe two three minutes they turn it down and then it will dry very fast <laughs> that's one way okay because the oil is very hot and then when they put it there it's like ironing the the costume so what i gain okay is a whole new world of experience very exciting very challenging it's super super fantastic okay so if you uh, have the opportunity try at least you if you can experience like six months it's still okay right that's, that's still very fantastic because it's not easy only selected ones can go offshore <laughs> okay and then you have here uh, uh i i managed to experience helicopter underwater escape training hewitt helicopter underwater escape training uh, certificate and i also obtained offshore passport so talking about helicopter underwater escape training so it's actually not only the training that i just now mentioned that you need to go from up there to this high very high platform and then jump down into a swimming pool to simulate jumping from offshore platform you also need to be inside a simulated helicopter and then the helicopter is simulated to crash land into the sea and then you will so this is a sea level and then this is helicopter and then it will and then what are you going to do so the helicopter is submerging and then how are you going to escape so inside this training they will teach you guide you train you how and what to do you cannot immediately if your if your helicopter is still one piece uh, when you landed on the surface of the sea you cannot immediately get out from the helicopter because if you get out immediately you see the blade is still moving and then you your head can be uh, cut off so you need to allow several minutes or seconds before you can actually escape all right so there's a, a different kind of story okay and then uh work at onshore and offshore platforms okay that those are what i experienced in the oil and gas okay working together with foreign principles okay foreign principles means because the chemicals that we got was coming from weatherford uh weatherford is a very very uh huge international company uh so we use their chemicals and uh to 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 uh to 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 prepare the chem to do, to prepare the specialty chemicals for corrosion inhibition inhibitor for de-oiler demulsifier and so on okay uh i managed to travel not to many countries but then to various places to malaysia so singapore to indonesia but then even though it's three countries still the experience of going here and there is amazing because as you know all of you like to travel right so when you travel you will learn new things you will get exposed to new things you will get massive exposure so it's something tremendous okay managing projects budget client manpower tender exercise flexibility of work good allowances and great food so i cannot i cannot deny this good allowances and great food especially you know when we are working in a very harsh place they will always provide something to make you happy and always good food great food superb food is something definitely what you need okay okay this is back to my my third job okay remember just now my first job was i was a research uh, officer in utm in the second job i was a uh, chemical slash project engineer for complete oil field stimulation services near Brahad. And then third job is here. Uh, I was a process engineer in an oil refinery company in Pasir Gudang. So the picture that you see here is actually 
me on top of a cooling tower and the cooling tower is very very high this cooling tower is very high so what you see here is actually uh something like uh maybe uh 20 or 30 meters from the ground okay and i am very skinny here because the the pressure from work is very very uh intense <laughs> Okay, and then, but then in this world, I learned many things as well. Okay, I did attend uh, some uh, conferences, some exhibition, participated in some uh, symposium related to the oil and fats industry. Okay, the first, sorry, the second job that I appeared just now, which is related to oil and gas, and this one is related to oil and fats. Okay, oil and fats. So it's uh, two different things. And then in this job, uh, this is actually a uh, flow meter, and here is heat exchanger. Okay, uh, this uh, was a design from uh, my supervisor in, in, in plan. Okay, supervisor in university is you report to your supervisor. The supervisor will actually help and get you. But here in the refinery, supervisor is the person working under the engineer. So supervisor is basically under me. I'm here, then supervisor, then I, we have plant operator, uh, fitter and others. Okay, so I will normally give instruction to a supervisor and supervisor will disseminate okay so supervisor uh, uh i have that time i have four supervisors so these supervisors will be actually your right hand man okay and then uh in 2004 this this picture was taken in 2004 and this is somewhere between maybe sagama and ahitam or mua or something like that i i forgot where's the place but then it's something like what happening now okay we are having a flooding now at the moment Johor and Pahang is severely impacted and this is somewhere happening in Johor and this flood resulted to the, the crude palm oil price okay because crude palm oil CPO is actually from palm oil and oil and fats is actually the, the oil that we can eat okay just now when I was working in the oil and gas those are oil that we use we want to get to power our to get energy but then what I'm saying here oil and fats is actually the oil that we need to consume for food all right and for other purposes as well so uh the palm oil comes from the palm oil tree and then during rainy season it's very difficult to get high quality uh, cpo and because of that cpo demand is very high and the price gets high as well and then because the price gets high and then very limited cpo and here is why i mentioned evil blending because CPO color is red in color, okay, it's bright red, bright orangey red. And when I say evil blending means, okay, you see this is a tanker which transport palm oil, but then some, uh, in some occurrence, which rarely take, takes place, people, they put water inside there and then they, they, they put coloring which all, all, almost imitate the color of uh, CPO. So, the this colored water entered my plant because i was taking care of a 3000 uh, ton per metric uh, refinery plant and then when this oil entered we thought it was oil but then it was actually water coming to the plant and the plant get head of hair wire so it's very challenge to maintain the plant that time but then uh, on 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 other particular occasion there are also challenges as well okay Okay, I also <laughs> experienced uh, some accidents. So this is quite funny because you see, when I was working in the oil and gas, I mentioned just now that in oil and gas, the, the safety is very, very super strict. But then I was very shocked because when I entered the oil and fats industry, the safety level is not, is very, very far from what the oil and gas have. So in this industry, in the oil and fats industry, okay, I'm talking now on that time, okay? This was like 15 years ago. So today, I, 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 I can see a lot of massive improvement in the oil and fats industry. But then 15 years ago, it was like this, okay? So it was in this oil and fat industry, I experienced numerous accidents, okay? One of it, okay, boiler explosion. I experienced boiler explosion. Luckily, I was not, I was not <laughs> caught with that, okay? But then I was just nearby in front of the boiler. So I thought uh, I was attacked by some missile. So it was very, very loud, the impact, okay? And then shutdown incident, 
uh, this is this is actually the photo showing the shutdown incident so i i i fell down during a very wet slippery night and my you see my feet my left hip my left my left foot okay my left foot uh i i fell down and my 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 left foot collided with a metal plate a metal plate so this is the metal plate and then ah twice and then that's why uh, i have uh, those two injury there and then those injury is was very deep very deep inside but luckily it did not hit my bone so i have to be uh, uh stitched a lot okay and when i was being stitched in this hospital this hospital was in pasir gudang i was being stitched and before i i i was uh, entertained to be stitched a boy died next to me because of asthma <laughs> so it was quite a very very horrific moment that time and then you can see when the the the, the boy i think it was standard four or standard five he died and then just next to me and then the pe the family was crying shouting Aah. okay so i i feel very very sad for for them and then uh, after that happened i asked the doctor so doctor how many people I, i'm sorry to say but i just i'm curious how many people died today and then i i forgot but maybe uh, 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 when i refer to that today i mean died from industrial incident okay industrial incident not that incident like uh, the asthma incident so the guy the, the doctor mentioned two two people died one one people one person died because uh, he fell onto a metal structure so this this may be a contract worker that there and then the, the other guy i forgot how he died okay but then this was actually happening inside this industry that time okay this time it has rapidly improved okay alhamdulillah okay and then i also i was attending a course and then uh, my car i was driving a kanchil back then because i live in skudai and then i work in pasir gudang so i need to commute 50 kilometers to Pasiguda and then 50 kilometers back to Skudai. So I need to have a smaller car so that my fuel will be more economical. Okay. But then uh, one sweet day, I was it was it was raining heavily, and then I was hit by a, a factory van, and then due to the the, the 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 momentum being transferred to me, and then I cannot do anything because the car just boom. So the car just uh, drifted just like that. It was slippery it was rainy and then i fell into a river somersault two times okay you know somersault two times then i hit the water and then every piece tiny every, every bits of glasses the front rear left and right broken water come into my car so wow okay i i i don't want to experience that again even though people will pay me one million ringgit Okay, and then uh, storage tank explosion. Okay, this also happened when I was uh, there in the oil and gas, oil and fats industry. So I was having a meeting, and then suddenly, boom! Then everybody went to the window there, and then they see, oh my God, the company next to us, they were actually uh, two percent were actually welding on top of the of the storage tank, and then the storage tank was was like maybe twenty or thirty meters high, and then they were welding it. And then suddenly, maybe due to spark, okay, and then maybe pressure increase inside the storage tank. It the the top cover of the of the storage tank, the boom. So it just uh, suddenly went upwards immediately, dr drastically, just like that. Pew. So two guys were on top of there. This was a fasting one, and three more days is Hari Raya, okay? Is the Hari Raya celebration, and those two guys were Indonesian contract worker one fell down immediately okay one fell down immediately die another one was trying trying to hold up to i i'm not sure whether the rope or uh, the wire or cable but then he cannot hold it and then he also went down so it's very very terrifying moment but now maybe <laughs> not not like that okay so what i learned from oil and fats industry okay uh continuous learning process so I learned many things every day. So I was working in, in this company for three years and six months, but it felt I felt like I was working there for 10 years. Okay. Every day was a very, very unique special day. Okay. Uh, I learned many things on a daily basis. 
dealing with superior art of listening and answering my superior was very very strict so i just need to to pay serious alert serious attention <laughs> managing downline man, manpower so uh, because you okay you guys are going to be you are going to be an engineer and then you need to know you need to master the art of communication because once you become an engineer there will be a lot of people working under you waiting for your command okay you will actually instruct them what to do so you need to know how to deal with them and these people are much much older than you some are like your father some are like your like your uncle okay okay because we need to be to stay uh alert all the time because my plan was running 24 hours okay and then perfect place to learn and get first exposure work long hours work 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 managing and leading the process plan coordination out of being well informed you need to to know to be alert on what is happening okay so you don't want to be uh dreaming uh wondering what's happening so you don't want to do that because you need to be to stay alert and then every time you you are working on continuous improvement of yourself as well as your the place you work okay and then uh, i felt that uh, because i got uh, tremendous pressure from not only the top management the upline but also I got pressure from downline. So during that time, our sideline, which is our the same level like us, which is the engineer, the executive, we support each other. Okay, that's uh, give motivation, give uh, advice, uh, support. So this, this is very important. You need to be able to survive, okay? Because nowadays, uh, I have been a lecturer in UTM for several years. I did receive some feedback from my students leaving, okay, my your, your, your seniors leaving from university, from UTM, and then some of them say, how, 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 doc, doctor, how did you cope to be engineer? It's very, very challenging, it's very difficult. I feel very pressured, I feel very scared. Uh, I cannot cope with the, the, the terrible environment, the harsh environment and so on. So you need to be mentally strong, okay? Mentally strong. Okay. Uh, depends on, okay, engineer scope and responsibility. So this is going to be very brief, okay? I'm just going to be fast. Depends on the type of uh, engineer you are, the job and uh, resp responsibilities will be given in the letter of appointment. Okay, I forgot to mention just, just now, when I was working in the, uh, in the oil and fats industry, not only me as chemical engineer, but we have mechanical engineers, we have electrical engineers, we have civil engineers as well. Okay, so those four main engineering disciplines are there inside the refinery I work. Okay, so it's very, very important for you to know so that you, you know that you have a lot of place to work. Okay, okay so back to this one, the job, the job scope set of tasks okay these are among the tasks that i need to do back then was when i was an engineer planning coordinating design meeting report so i do report every day every single day i need to report to our headquarters and our boss okay and then at the end of the month there are always a re many reports this planning coordinating design meeting report also every day <laughs> this is quite different from uh, the oil and gas work that i had before this is this was when I was a process engineer. Okay, documentation, paperwork, production target. So we have certain target: three thousand ton per day of crude palm oil being processed. Okay, so we need to achieve that target. So if anything happen, we need to know uh, how to actually overcome that. Okay, I need to answer to the boss why I am not reaching this target. Okay, maintenance, repair, customer service, support, costing, financial. So. Not only that we need to take care of the plant, but we need to take care that the plant is being uh, managed well. Man when I say managed well means in terms of financial as well. Okay, not only the plant, uh, okay, you can produce this chemical, uh, you can produce this product, you can produce this and that, but then you, you need to make sure that the cost, the operating cost is low. So then we'll always ask, why, your, why last month your operating cost is very high? And then you need to answer then this is one of the function of engineers you need to keep on improvising your plan or your work area to get the cost lower and lower every time and then we have procurement project management and so on 
product, project management, of course, you need to build this and that, many other new projects and so, so on. Okay, more additional tasks. Okay, leading your own team. Okay, you need to lead your own team. Like I mentioned just now, I have actually that time 20 people under me. So I need to manage them. And a lot of them, majority of them are older than me. Okay, so we need to know how to treat them, how to respect them. But at the same time, they cannot overpower us, right? Okay, empowering, training, taking care of them. So we need to take to, to help and guide them, even though they have the experiences, but we need to know how to tackle that. Appraisal, bonus, overtime, OT. So this also we need to take care because sometimes we keep on giving them overtime, overtime, and then our boss, our manager asks, why you give this guy overtime up to this, uh, uh, up to when we equate to the ringgit, up to 2,000 ringgit, then we need to answer. So you need to know whether you can allow them or permit them to give overtime or not and so on. So meeting suppliers and vendors, I love it because uh, from here I, I learned a lot as well. Auditor checker, so I, I managed to audit and check other departments. Okay, trainer, mentor. So I have my trainer and mentor helping me. So I really appreciate their help. Domestic inquiry panel. So this is when, this is like the court inside the company, the court, okay. The court mahkamah eh, inside the company because sometimes some people will do some uh, illegal thing or some uh, will will do some something that is not he is supposed to do. So we need to question them. So sometimes I became one of the panel. Why are you doing this? Why do that? Why did you take this, this action and so on? So <laughs> that's the inquiry, the domestic inquiry panel. Dosh, Department of Safety and Health. So sometimes we need to to do this, okay, because every 15 months our plan will be check okay check and uh, uh have, have to be stopped for cleaning and maintenance purposes and after that dosh people will come to check and inspect and only when they put their signature approving everything then only you can box up the plan and then you can start the plan back again all right panels committee and so on many, many things okay okay self-development you you have your cpd future career prospect involvement in organization soft skills enhancement be a professional engineer so this is something that you should target okay so be a professional engineer okay uh, with board of engineers malaysia okay equipped with uh, equipped with other expertise and so on so here are some of the okay how can undergraduate stu students prepare themselves to tackle the engineering world in university so this is quite not updated, but then I have more updated one, but I, 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 I'm sorry I didn't put the most updated one. But here it is mentioned communication, verbal and written, honesty, integrity. So these are among the very, very high sought after skills that you need to have. Okay. But then for the 20th century, okay, from for 2020, okay, you also need to have critical thinking skill as well. Uh, and also uh, problem solving skill. So, so I can say communication skill, prob, uh, com sorry, communication skill, uh, critical thinking, problem solving, uh, and also team working. So those are the four very, very important skills that you need to have, okay? Uh, <laughs> here are some other, in, in, okay, so the, 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 the source here, Job Outlook 2015, uh, and then uh, this is the other source for the table here. So in this analysis, they mentioned leadership skill is being required. Ability to work in a team is really required. So you see, uh, this one is communication. Uh, sorry for the spelling error. Commun communication skill also uh, required problem solving, strong work ethic. Okay, so this is very important. Uh, I, I learned that a lot of you in university tend to or love to work individually. So if you are this type of person, try to start mixing and also work in a team because when you start working, you will actually be working in a team. Okay, it's very, very important. Okay, engineering attributes. Okay, uh, so this is consistent with uh, my point just now. You need to master English. Okay, this is a very, very uh, important. Okay, uh, you need to be mastering it verbal and writing. Okay. Uh, communication skills. So you need to be able to communicate it, communicate effectively. Okay, critical thinking skill. Yeah, I, I mentioned that just now. Pra practical exposure. So you need to have as much practical exposure as possible. So uh, while you are in university, you can try to do many things. Okay, but then of course now it's COVID, so it's quite difficult for you to do that. And uh, some of you is uh, have experienced difficulty in doing uh, practical lab exp experiments, but 
yeah i know it's difficult but uh please don't blame the situation you can be creative to try other things as well okay academic result must be improved as well so it is something that is very important because from the academic result that's the first filtration from your future employer so when they say when they see maybe your result is two point uh second class upper for example second class upper then you will be called for interview but maybe if you get second class lower or third class it's going to be very difficult for them to call you even though maybe you have super communication skill <laughs> all right or maybe super confidence in many things so it's quite difficult so you need to take care of your result as well judgment and leadership okay so those are some engineering attributes that are very very important for you so my advice study smart get good results develop uh, your soft and le leadership skill be confident okay be confident you need to have strong character you need to have a strong mental okay very very strong mental okay be strong you need to train your mental to be very strong okay i i i, I cannot stress that uh, uh, but then it's, it's very very difficult you need to just be strong have a strong character okay enjoy student life also very important <laughs> because when you start working it's going to be a very different chapter okay plan your future and work for it okay, so these are uh, the institution that you need to engage with board of engineers malaysia institution of engineers malaysia engineering council uk i came okay this uh it, uh i came is for chemical engineers okay but then for you the rest of the engineering discipline you need to register with bem and iem engineering council of uk yes so if you are uh, if you want, you can register there as well. No harm. Okay. So uh, the Engineering Council of UK is same like BEM in Malaysia. Okay. But this is optional. It's up to you. Okay. Okay. What you need to do now? Okay. Register BEM and IEM. So now you are a student. So it's okay. You just register as a student chapter and then get yourself a mentor. Okay. Uh, once you start working, okay, you register again as a associate member for im and just uh, register for bm which is actually a regulation okay you need to register and then get yourself a mentor now there are three person under me that i am mentoring okay <laughs> get yourself a mentor and then after three years apply for professional uh interview so uh so you you need to apply for the professional interview then only you can have the title ir in front of your name so uh throughout that process three-year process you need to prepare technical report and training and experience report okay undergo the professional interview oral interview and essay writing wait for result successful professional engineer so wait for the result until then you become a successful pro professional engineer so it's very important to get a very good mentor so that the mentor can advise you and know what you are lacking so then you can actually uh, empower any area that you are lacking of okay so this is my last slide okay those are some of my uh sharing or contribution uh, i i wrote a book chapter in this uh, book published by wiley so it's process plan equipment operation control and reliability so i give a talk in uh, iskandar malaysia uh, this was like 10 years ago i wrote a uh, an article trends in plate heat exchanges uh, this I forgot what uh, magazine was this, but then this was published by an African-based country. Okay, and then of course I published this book, uh, uh, "Ramblings of a Chemical Engineer," recently. Okay, in two thousand eighteen. All right, I think that's all. Okay, so uh, if you have any question, please uh, let me know. Then maybe Sham can uh, help to read it for me. Then we'll try to answer any questions. Okay, back to you, Sham. Are you there? I hope you are there. So I'm trying to see if there's any question from uh, stream yet. Okay. I see there's one question. Uh, I'm not sure. Doctor can't hear me. No, I cannot hear you, uh, Sham. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? 
Ah, no, I can hear you a, a bit. Okay, okay. What a sensor of sharing sessions, Doctor. Thank you so much for it. I hope the viewers have already taken some important notes. So without delaying, let's see how many questions are there. So there is this one question by Syed Asif. Mm. Uh, he asked us, how do we lubricate long pipeline from inside if it is corroded? Okay, thank you for the question. I, I'm not sure Syed Asif is from what uh, discipline of engineering, maybe mechanical or petroleum or, okay. Uh, okay, let me just uh, explain to you in the perspective that I worked before. The pipeline that I, uh, okay, we, we, you call it lubricate, lubricate, but we call it, uh, uh, we, 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 we actually put a film of chemical. So we, 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 we don't lubricate, we just uh, put this corrosion inhibitor with certain thickness Okay, so we actually, okay, the pipeline that we were uh, dealing that time was uh, 15, nearly 16 kilometers. It's very long, okay? So we need to do, the, we need to do the calculation and then we need to blend the chemical and then uh, we need to know the volume, how much is needed to actually layer the internal side of the pipeline for about maybe one, let's assume maybe one mm thick or maybe 0 0.5 mm thick, okay? So we need to calculate that. We need to blend the chemicals based on the volume required and then based on the thickness and then we pump in the chemical inside there and then we launch a peak, okay? The peak is called bidirectional peak, okay? There are various types of peaks, okay? Those in petroleum uh, engineering will know about this. Those of you who don't know, you can Google about this. PIG pig, okay, not that animal, okay. <laughs> so th there are many types of pig, but then when we want to uh, make the layers evenly distribute and sticking inside the internal side of the pipeline, we need to uh, launch the pig after we already uh, inserted or maybe pump in the chemical, okay, the corrosion inhibitor, and then the bi dye pig will actually uh, run through. So see, this is imagine this is the pipe. So the pipe, and then, okay, uh, okay. Let's let's say this is the the this is the the peak. Okay, so I don't have other example. So it will go up there. So this peak will actually try to make it even, the layers evenly distribute inside there. Okay, but this this can only be used for what we call a corrosion that is uh, not very serious. Okay. Uh, not uh, not serious corrosion means uh, the corrosion is not uh, severe. If you have something like uh, pitting corrosion, a pitting corrosion is like this is a layer, and then this is okay. Imagine this is a layer, and then it will, you will have a very tiny hole, a very tiny hole. But then that hole is very very deep. Even though the the diameter of the hole is uh, maybe 0 0.1 0 0.1 mm, but then it's very deep that's corrosion pitting. So that one you cannot uh, solve by doing this, uh, uh, putting the layer of corrosion inhibitor. So that one you need to do some additional treatment. Then only you need to, you, you need to preserve and improvise uh, and, and eliminate the pitting corrosion. Then only you can uh, use the normal uh, layers of uh, corrosion inhibitor. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. So you need to have a uh, sufficient chemical and also you need to uh, make it even by using the bi-directional peak. So it's just like you can imagine like uh, you have the tar on the road. Okay, when you want to build, construct a road, you, you have the tar and then you have that steam roll. So it's actually rolling down the, uh, the, the, the tar on the road. Uh, so it's the same thing, same concept. But then this is actually doing it inside the pipeline. Okay, I hope that answers it. Okay, Sham, do we have any other question? I hope. Uh, uh, yes, we have hmm. one more question by Akmal Hakim Sham. Yes. So the okay. question is, is there any work opportunity for electronic engineering course in oil and gas? Yes, there are a lot of opportunities. Okay, you see, there are a lot of control panels. There are uh, electricity powering the... Uh, uh, the offshore platform. So if you are referring to offshore platform, okay, and also oil and gas, oil and gas, uh, you can divide oil and gas to two. So 
the onshore and offshore. So if you are re referring to uh, offshore, okay, you can because uh, the offshore is actually uh, it's, it's like a, a, a place, a living place, a working place, a refinery, uh, a machine in the middle of the sea. Okay, so of course, power, electric, electrical power need to be uh, sent there and then it will be distributed there and then there will be high, sorry, there will be, uh, uh, there will, there will be many things and there will be uh, their own transformers, there will be their own uh, electrical panel, there will be many, many things that actually need to be distributed to the pump, to the heater, to the uh, inverter and so on. So electric, electrical and electronic engineer must be there as well, okay? When you refer to electronic, there are a lot of devices, computers that require uh, electrical and electronic people to help there. Sometimes there are problems, so these people are required. So if you ask uh, any work opportunity for uh, electrical, electronic engineering, yes, many, many opportunities. You just need to uh, to to find it out, okay? <laughs> okay, yeah. and then grab it, okay? I hope that answers. Okay, any other questions, Sham? Uh, I don't think so. There are more questions. So okay. I think that's it. Uh, thank you okay. so much for the comments who have done it. Uh, since we were given a very short time, I would like to mm -hmm. apologize for that. Uh, many thanks to Dr. Zaki. Uh, for you. his wonderful ex exchange to us. You are such an incredible person and an inspiring <laughs> also. <laughs> it was oh a God. great pleasure for me to have you today as our speaker. Uh, okay, we wish you all you. the best in everything you do. And mm. thank you to all the viewers for staying with us until the end of this session. Mm -hmm. uh, stay thank tuned for more updates uh, in the next webinar from Facebook. Until then, have a great day, everyone. Thank you okay. and see you. Thank you very much. Okay. okay, thank you, Faculty Engineering and so on. Okay, thank you, Sham. Thank you, Dr.